first stop of the day, Simpson Springs Station. Did you know that the first eastbound Pony Express courier stopped here in April the 7th in 1860 at 5 p.m. and westbound on April 10th at 2 p.m. and the very last rider came through here in October 1861. True story. I think it's about time we take a look in the cabin now, huh? Or sorry, the Pony Express station. Yeah, this is actually a, a reconstruction of one. There were so many buildings here and of course Alvin used the stones from the original Pony Express to build his cabin, which is over there, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So this was reconstructed. There were so many buildings in this area because it was the main source of water that um, they don't know exactly which building was used as a Pony Express station. Yeah. But this is, as I said, a reconstruction. So let's take a look. So it is very simple. Uh -huh. Well, at least we're out of the wind and the rain. It's, it's nice and warm in here. <laughs> so this is called Simpson Springs and it was named by um, an explorer called Captain J.H. Simpson. And he came through the area in 1858 looking for a suitable route for the overland. Mm. Now this station was also used by um, not only the Pony Express, but freighting companies, stagecoach and the overland mail system oh, wow. back in the day. And if you look up at the top of this post, you'll see a little bird nesting. Don't know Hello, little one. Isn't that adorable? So behind this fence, which we cannot get into, is Alvin Anderson's stone cabin that he built for his wife. And the stones that he used to build it were from the abandoned Pony Express station. Yeah, unfortunately, his wife never made it here. She uh, died giving childbirth, or during childbirth, so never saw the cabin that he'd built for her. Oh, that's sad. So somewhere along here was the Government Creek Station. Now this was a telegraph relay station in 1861 and although it wasn't listed as a Pony Express stop, it is the right distance for change of horses. However, apart from that metal pole that you can see, there isn't anything at all left. So what's this, a little uh, corral? Or? No, I believe. So back in the Pony Express days, this was known as General Johnson's Pass. Today it's known as Lookout Pass. And I read that there was a natural spring and they tried to dam it to catch some of the water. And I believe this is the natural spring and further down there's the remains of a rock wall which I believe could possibly be the old dam and the road the Pony Express route actually went up and over the hill so let's take a look and see if we can find it Okay, I see what you mean. It's kind of tell where it's running down this direction or would have. It 
it's very, very lush in this spot here. Yeah, and further down here is an old stone wall or brick wall. Not brick. Oh, I see it. Yeah. See it? And there are rem remains of things. So, and this kind of looks like a trough. So I'm wondering whether or not this is what they called at the time a dam to try and, you know, stop the water. Which means that that trail up there was the original Pony Express route. So there's the old marker. So this would have been the dam built up here. So this was the old route. If the marker's there, the dam's here. This would have been the route. Do you concur, Dr. Watson? I believe you are 100% <laughs> correct. Putting my Sherlock Holmes hat on. Yeah. And you can actually see, cool, that's winded me. You can actually see the kind of terrain that they would have had to have galloped through. Oh yeah. So did you know the Pony Express was shut down during June and July of 1880 because of the Paiute War? And I'm not sure which way west is, but looking west from this direction, it's known as Paiute Hell. And the soldiers were sent in to, you know, stop the dispute. True story. So I'm kind of wondering what this stone structure is out here. Well, a family called the Rockwells had a log cabin here between 1870 and 1885. And Libby Rockwell used to bury her dogs in a cemetery. And I believe this is what's known as Libby's Cemetery. Unfortunately, it's all overgrown, but they do believe that uh, an immigrant family is also buried in this plot, uh, mother, father and child, along with Libby's, I think there was like six dogs. And she was known as Aunt Libby and she didn't have any children. So as all you dog lovers know, our puppies are our babies. So this is where she, she buried them. And I'm not sure what happened to Aunt Libby or her husband. So there's a little plaque here, which is really sweet. And it reads, those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed and always dear. And welcome to Faust? Faust. Faust? Faust <laughs> Station? <laughs> this station was originally established by Chawpenning in 1858 as a stagecoach stop. And it did have many, many names. It's now on a main road. Yeah, you can probably hear the traffic. We had to ditch the back roads, the dirt roads, to go onto pavement, which we were kind of upset about. True story. Oops, the Pony Express logo has been thieved. Hooligans. Hooligans. So this is Rush Valley. Yes, so as you can see, we're out in the middle of the desolation, like most of the Pony Express was back then. And not much is known about this station here, except for there's a gun range nearby. 
<laughs> and I would talk about it all the time. It's kind of going back and picturing and or imagining, if you will, the riders running as fast as they can on their horses to get the mail to the next station, change the horse, get on to the next one, and, and continue on for about 70 miles until they're allowed to rest. And uh, some of the landscapes that they would go through were just so barren. And you think about the weather, like today it's a bit moody, it's raining, it's a bit cold. They still had to ride through that. They had to ride through the hot temperatures in the summer. So we're at Camp Floyd and uh, Fairfield. This is the Fairfield Stagecoach Inn, and it was a Pony Express stop. Now this was built in 1858, and looking at the photos, it hasn't changed at all. And I do have a fun fact about this place. What's that? Samuel Clemens, AKA Mark Twain, mm -hmm. stayed here with his brother back in 1861. And also another famous person, the British explorer, Sir Richard Burton, he also came through and stayed here. And it was quite a luxurious place in its day. Oh yeah. Now, unfortunately, it's closed and there's an event going on today. You might so, hear uh, the people in the background. I'm not sure whether or not, or I'm not sure how much we're gonna be able to explore, but uh, let's see if we can peek through the window, shall we? All right, so would you believe our luck? We were able to get inside the museum. And we're allowed to film, which is a bonus. Uh, the guys that run this place just gave us a ton of information. So some of it we'll have to correct. So this was a main hotel. Um, it wasn't part of the Pony Express per se. It was um, a stagecoach stop. Pardon the young whippersnapper running through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all of the furniture in here is not original to the property, apart from one item, which is the rocking chair, rocking chair and that was Carson's original rocking chair. Everything else, is original to the period, but not to the hotel. Correct. So, and also, it was built in segments. So when it was a hotel, this back entrance, or the part we're in now, is an addition. This was where the family lived. So this is one of the newer additions which was constructed in 1876. So still pretty old. Yeah. And then here's the next one, a little baby bed. Another bed. And then finishing off the entranceway. That's Sydney Johnston. and then the gravestone of Carson's. Now there is a grave yard, a cemetery, just further up the road. We will take a look at that. But this area was um, a station for the military and they had 7,000 inhabitants at the time and over 3,500 of those were soldiers. All right, apologies. We think we've got the place to ourselves now. <laughs> So as I was saying, so the whole town had over 7,000 inhabitants, but 50% of those were soldiers, and they stayed here till 1861, and that's when the place closed down because of the Civil War. Mm. Which room did Mark Twain stay in? Yeah. Now, again, they're not 100% sure that this was the exact hotel. Right. Because but... there were several hotels mm -hmm. in town but they do say it is a strong possibility. Because this was the nicest. Yeah, and it was on the, the stage route, the overland route, which it's said that he was on. So yeah, with it his would brother. make sense. Look at the old milk churn, butter churn. And then close up look at the old butter churn, you said? Yeah, I think it's a milk churn, butter churn. And, well, and the butter churn, I th that one's on the left. Yeah, as where well, they used a newer to. Newer edition here. Well, or that's, isn't that also something to do with curds and whey as well? Uh, where they separated the curds and whey? Uh, I, sure. 
something like that. <laughs> let a little us Miss know. Muffet? Yeah, let yeah. us know in the comments. I look at the, nice is that, cast iron pan. There. Now, isn't that... I, I can't touch it. Yeah, that's a little egg poacher, isn't it? I think so. That's what it looks like to me. But tiny. Yeah. Maybe for quails. Quail eggs. Now, I know well, what Everything these are. was smaller back then, so maybe the chicken eggs were smaller too. These were jelly or blancmange. <laughs> Do you have blancmange over here? No. Okay, so blancmange is kind of like a jelly. It's a bit more squishy. But we... Um, yeah, I remember these. They're still around today, blancmange and jelly moulds. And of course, no trip would be complete without a trip to the loo. Let's take a look. That was actually quite uh, impressive for those days, really, oh, wasn't yeah. it? That was luxury. Old bathtub. It looks comfortable as well, I mean. With an armchair? Yeah. And the old washboard, and you know what that indentation is on the washboard's for, don't you? The soap. Yep. Nice lantern. So it actually says here, water was heated on the stove for the tub, and with the wet, when the weather was nice, customers to the inn were expected to bath in the nearby stream. The toilet chair in the corner of the room comes with a chamber pot, which can be emptied through the back. Hmm. Just like us. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful fireplace. Nice writing desk. Yeah, I love the writing desk and those books as well. Yeah. That's one thing I really miss traveling is not to have hardcover books to read because we don't have the space. Yeah. And then there's a... Uh, a replica of one of the Pony Express rider saddle. So they could lock the important mail away, keep it safe and sound. And it was designed this way for easy, they yeah. could rip it off one rider horse and then put it on another one. Yep, quickly and efficiently. Kind of like how, uh, you know, with race car drivers, NASCAR or Formula One, how they go in for the pit stop, do it super quick nowadays. Now these are the sort of museums I like. I like it when it's all kind of like decked out and you've got the old dining room table. And look at the forks. The forks are very, very similar to those that we saw at um, Beth Anderson's, the Bagley Ranch, mm -hmm. which was the original Pony Express station. Yep. So this was the, the dining room or the dining hall. It served Pony Express riders, stagecoach drivers, passengers, miners, teachers, and other guests. The inn offered the last decent food and lodging before Utah's West Desert. The next stops of Faust and Simpson Springs offered more rustic accommodations. Now this Wow, you're just a wealth of knowledge. How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> However, the Pony Express riders didn't live here. So every 75 to 100 miles there was like a home station and that's where the riders could spend several days recovering right. um, and then move on. Yep. All right. Upstairs we go. i tell you something. You wouldn't want one too many and go up and down these stairs. Oh, I know. I'd be permanently in a neck brace because there's no handrail. Now we do have some more children up here, so that are screaming. So this room was originally used by the family, but they later changed it into a guest room. And according to the info board, this is what a lady would bring with her on her travels when riding a stagecoach. So she's got her old Bonnet? No, yeah, the bonnet on the chair. I'm trying to think what those bags are called. Um, carpet bags, we used to call them, mm. because they were made of carpet. Yeah. And then look at the comb I could do with that to get the knots out of my hair. Um, and the long gloves, and a little pair of spectacles. Nice.
And on into the next room. It looks more like the gentleman's room. I like the bed and the uh, the wall decorations. You have the lighting in here. Now, I, I really like this period of time because of the way they're dressed, like the top hat. Again, the spectacles, like the lady, the, the needle book there. But my favorite item in this whole room has to be the camera. Because I'm a cameraman. I mean, I love that stuff. It's pretty neat, isn't that it? That is incredible to see. And it's even got the box. Have you seen the box? Yeah. Down below. The camera, camera supplies. supplies. And another thing I love is the uh, like the old chests. And they put all their belongings in. They were just very fancifully made. The decorations on them. I mean, even the work that went into making these is just, it, it's still in good shape today. And just to give you a size comparison, I'm sitting right next to it. I'm six foot five and a half, <laughs> 240 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> But on a serious note, that's, that's beautiful. All right, here we are outside second floor on the balcony. So we were just discussing if these were the entrances to the rooms originally. They would have had to have been. There would have been some kind of staircase somewhere to get up here. It's not on this side. Now, all of this part of the building was original. And in that photograph earlier, that was a a sketch made in 1958. We've just been chatting to a historian and he said that the other part of the house was a newer addition um, in the 70, 1878, I believe. Mm. So we're gonna go into that newer part of the addition and this is where we think those stairs would have been. It would make sense that those stairs would come up here. No stairs, just another bed. The mattress on this looks really thin. And you can see, you get a little bit of a close up. It's had like the, the rope tied around, so no comfortable spring mattresses or memory foam or adjustable with air, whatever. Rope and some blankets. Yeah, and I was just reading up here, so the main inn that we were just in was made of adobe. This is made of wood and they increased the size because the army brought in apparently more visitors. And the two visitors, the famous ones, there is a photograph of Mark Twain and the British explorer Rich, Sir Richard Burton. And here's also something interesting. So you know when you visit historic sites, they always talk about bullet holes and the deaths that happened in the area. So there's a hole there, and it continues through to this side of the wall. But as a gentleman mentioned to us, now if you owned this establishment and you knew somebody just blew a hole through your wall, wouldn't you fix it instead of leaving it? So the legend goes that somebody was cleaning their rifle and their rifle went off accidentally. So nobody was ever shot here or anything like that. But like Stephen said, wouldn't you fix it? And now in here, we're about to head down stairs outside of the building, but you can see this window and the adobe. This was the original outside wall. So if you ended up having that bedroom, You'd have to keep these uh, curtains closed. Yeah. No privacy. Now watch these stairs. The first step is about two inches. The next step is about 10 inches. So they're all really hickety pickety. Again, wouldn't have had, wanted to have one too many coming down here. No. So two story houses definitely would not suit me. <laughs> okay, and the last room of the museum. Now, what was this one? Uh, this is a rec, rec room. Okay. Apparently. Amusements. So, uh, there was no gambling or drinking allowed. Bummer. Activities allowed included square dancing, reading, listening to music, and playing games like checkers. So, this was what the hotel looked like in the 1950s before the renovation. 
The only reason why this building is still standing is because it was continued to be used as a hotel or traveller's rest right up until 1947. The rest of the town was demolished. The bricks, the wood, all repurposed, used elsewhere. But let's see if we can find where the Pony Express station was, shall we? And from what we can gather, we think that the, the house in the corner here was where the original Pony Express station once stood. So as far as we can tell, that, pardon the car, over there just under the traffic light is the remains of another monument. Yeah, this was Joe's dugout station. Um, not only was there a station here, just a little bit further down the road there was a grocery store uh, that was built and operated by Joseph Dalton and apparently he built a two-roomed brick home and a log barn and a dugout for an Indian boy helper. But nothing is known about this area at all after, 90, uh, after 1861. So this is the spot of the grocery store and other buildings. Now I do have a fun fact about this place. There was a well water, but the water was hauled up from Utah Lake and sold for 25 cents a bucket. True story. Okay, we've reached our next destination of Rockwell Station. And we will apologize now. We are entering the outskirts of Salt Lake City. So it's gonna be a little bit more sporadic, harder for us to find some of these locations. And you know, once you get into a bigger area, everybody starts driving like city -its. <laughs> But the actual location of the monument was well the actual station is over now there. over in the prison complex so, so we obviously can't film that yeah but this is kind of like the nearest place so it was named after Orin Porter Rockwell that's meant to be a statue of him now he was a member of the Mormon protection group a Don uh, Danite, I believe they're called, and he was also friends with Joseph Smith, who was the founder of Mormonism, and later he became his bodyguard. Later still, he became a lawman, and it is said that he had a reputation for swift and final justice. True story. Something we're missing greatly these days. <laughs> made it up to Little Mountain Summit. And of course, being at the top of Little Mountain, the wind is horrendous. But what makes this spot special 
is this is where the Pioneer Trail, the, the Honor Party the came Donor through Party here. The Donor Party came through at 46. And the Pony Express all came through this section. Must look mighty different today than it did back then. And this was the last summit that they passed on their journey through to California on this stretch of the mountains. We have made it safely up and over the Emigrant Pass, and this was the scene of yet another station stop. Yeah, this is Wheaton Springs Station. And that again, nothing's really known about it apart from a spring and a corral was shown on an 1881 survey plot. Um, there was meant to be a one room square log cabin, which has been moved from its first location but very pretty. It is, and now this is, you can see the fence. This is private property. There is a home back over there, so we won't be venturing onto this property. All right, the next spot. The reason we've stopped here, this is a marker for Broad Hollow. Now, this is where the Donner Party went up to the top of the ridge and then back down through the valley because at the time, there was no road that cut through here. That was created many years later. Now there are discrepancies as well with this place because they do believe, some historians believe, that the Pony Express station would be now underneath where the reservoir and the dam is. So not a lot is known about its exact location. All right, we are now in the small town of Echo, which has some cool old buildings and some history to it. Let's see, we'll give you a good 360. That's the highway over there, the 80 runs through. But again, just some gorgeous scenery that a lot of historic people and times came through this area. Yeah, the Donner Party came through in 1846. The Mormon Pioneer Trail came through in 1847 the Overland Stagecoach in 1854, the Johnston's Army and Utah War, 1857, along with the Gold Rush and California Trail, 1857, Pony Express in 1860, the Transcontinental Telegraph in 1861, the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869, the Lincoln Highway in 1913 and the interstate. Better view of the mountains. So this is considered Bromley's Cathedral, did you say? Yeah, Bromley's Cathedral. And panning over to the right, there used to be a huge rock there that unfortunately they blew up when the railroad went through called Pulpit Rock. And that was one of the main landmarks for all of those people I listed earlier. So when the Pony Express did come through here, there was a small town it had a couple of grocery stores and a blacksmith, but no one knows the exact location of where the Pony Express station was. But we thought we'd take a little drive through Frank's Echo's self-service station, closed. Daily specials, closed. Motel, that does look like a home now and a big truck but quaint little town you can see the old road there and that's it that's the town so we're going to drive back the other way along the railway line and the GPS coordinates that I've got for the Pony Express 
is just a few hundred feet after that other marker that we saw. All right, so this is Weber Station. It's a historical view site of Pulpit Rock, where it once was, and the Witch's Caves. And I guess they could have uh, called them the Witch's Caves because the highway is just behind us. But the way the sound works, it makes it sound like freeways up on top. Pretty neat. And Weber Station was also a home station, which meant the Pony Express riders didn't just stop here, change horses and carry on. These stations were built every 75 to 100 miles. Um, and that's where the Pony Express riders would call home for a few days, recuperate until they either went back the way they came or continued further down. Eat your heart out, Adam the Woo. It is cold, rainy, windy, dark, storms are moving in. And we're at what they believe is halfway station. And apparently the Pony Express station itself got demolished in 1868 when the railway went through. However, I do have a fun fact. Apparently, there are a load of horse rustlers and they used to steal the Pony Express horses and then sell them back to the company. Now to stop this, the company decided to brand the horses with an EX for Express and that stopped the rustling. True story. Okay, so this is the head of Echo Canyon, which is also known as Castle Rock. But it kinda is not what we were expecting. So it was also known as Frenchies, and that was because the log cabin station, which they believed was a little bit further away, about a mile away, a half a mile away, um, a French trapper moved, moved it to this location from the original one. And here, there used to be a grocery store. But unfortunately, you can see it's just a junkyard. This would have been the first stop for the Pony Express riders entering Utah. It is our last stop because we're now on the Wyoming border. This was called the Needles, but unfortunately with the snow, we can't really make them out. <laughs> I think there's a few over there that you, I can just barely see, but uh... And nothing is known about this site at all, but it was named by Sir Richard Burton, the British explorer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that seems to be a common theme. Like we've, we've kind of noticed there's also discrepancies. It said there's 192 stops, but we've read that there's only 172. I think some of the stops were because they were stops, but they weren't actually listed on the original mail contract because all the stops were between seven and ten miles apart right so those little stops were kind of like way stations they used stagecoach stops instead yeah so that's gonna kind of 
wrap up the Pony Express, isn't it? It is indeed. And as you can see, it's snowing and bitterly cold. So on that note, get out there, go and explore, put another pin in the Atlas, and we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye. Thank you.